Good evening. Welcome to another You and the Word. I'm Chaplain Kevin Santucci, and thank you very much for joining in with us. We're going to start off this evening's session with a word of prayer. But before we do have a word of prayer, I'd like to remember in prayer this evening all of the mothers. All of the mothers this evening who are going through challenges with their children, through whatever challenge they're going through this evening, we're going to be, be remembering mothers this evening dealing with challenges with their children. Let's have a word of prayer and ask the Lord's blessings as well upon the word. Father, we come before thy presence this evening. and We praise and thank you for another day you've granted to us. We ask for your forgiveness, O Lord. We ask your blessings, O Father, upon mothers who are going through challenging experiences with their children. And that you would bring comfort to them, O Lord, and that you would arrest their children. And that they may turn their hearts unto you who is life eternal. Now bless your word to us this evening, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you again for joining us for You in the Word. And I'd like to say good evening to all of those who have just joined us uh, for the first time. And those who have joined us uh, over a span of time who have been with us. Some of our viewers through You in the Word, they are excited about the Word itself. And we thank you very much for uh, sharing those thoughts with us. Letting us know that they are actually got their Bibles open as we have our Bibles open. And they're studying the Word of God, and we praise God for the opportunity that He has given unto us to study the Word of God. This evening's session, we'll be looking here at the Mysteries of the Kingdom Unfold, Part 4. And this evening's message is entitled, You See the Blade First, Then After the Air. You See the Blade First, Then After the Air. This year I took opportunity to plant some corn, and may I say to you that the corn is coming along quite well in some of the gardens of which the Lord has blessed us with. But as corn gets started, friends, corn starts with a blade. And as the blade of corn starts out, and then you see the other structure of the plant itself taking its full form, and then you see what is called the air of the plant. We call it corn. Corn is a very important plant uh, and a very important food. It carries with it all sorts of nutrients and vitamins which are good for the body. In the days of Jesus, Jesus had to deal with more than just corn in his days. He dealt with wheat, one of the most staple diets in the Middle East to this current uh, or to this day is still wheat, rye as well. These are some of the staple diets of the East. If you go further into Africa, you start uh, eating what is called impala. But all of these foods here start out as grain grown, and it starts off with a blade first. This evening's subject we'll be dealing, we'll be looking at directly Mark chapter 4, looking at verses 26 to 29. Let's begin with the text itself in the book of Mark. On you and the word and this is an open Bible study this evening and as we look at the word itself I encourage you to open your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 4 and again we're picking up here from verses 26 and the Word of God says looking at the parable of the seed the kingdom of God is like a man who sowed good seed day after day he worked and slept and goes about his other chores with confidence, knowing that the seed will sprout and grow even though he can't explain how it all happens. But it does happen, and he knows that the soil will produce a harvest without his help. It first produces the, the blade, then the air, and finally the full grain of corn in the air. Then as soon as the corn is ready, he calls his workers to reap what he has sown. Notice this parable this evening, friends. It was the sower who went forth to sow. But when he needed help to reap his harvest, he called forth 
helpers to help him reap the field. I'm singling out this point here at first because as we get more into the subject, this would be the main theme of this evening's subject itself. The parable of the sower excited much questionings in Jesus' day. Some of the hearers gathered from it that Jesus was not to establish an earthly kingdom. And many were curious and perplexed. Why would Jesus speak on such wise when we are looking for an earthly kingdom? Seeing their perplexity, the Word of God says that Jesus now used other illustrations, still seeking no turn, sorry, still seeking to turn the thoughts and the aspiration of the people from the worldly kingdom to the work of God's grace in the soul. Jesus now seeks to establish this. And how does he establish this great work? Well, the word of God says, and he said, so is the kingdom of God as a man, as he should cast seed into the earth and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of her kind. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in a sickle, because the harvest is ready. Notice the word sickle in this point here. The husbandman, who put it in the sickle because of the harvest is come can be no other than Christ himself, friends. It is he who at the last great day will reap the harvest of the earth. But the sower of the seed represents those who labor in God's stead. Talking about ministers and pastors, evangelists, talking about church members who go forth sharing the gospel seed Everyone's called to do a work for the Lord. The seed is said to spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Friends, when you go forth sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't know what impact you are making upon someone's life. Only the Lord knows the impact. But God said so in all grounds. We don't know. The seed is said to spring up. And this is not true uh, of the Son of God, friends, sowing, but it's true of you who's sowing today. Christ does not sleep over his charge. But the Bible says that there are some watchmen who are sleeping over the charge of which God has given. But God says that Christ is watching his charge day and night. He is not ignorant of the seed growing. And yet we find that there are some who are ignorant of the seed that is growing. The parable of the seed reveals that God is at work in nature. This is a good thing. I want to pause this evening because someone's making a point here, and this evening is an open Bible discussion, and we do welcome your comments this evening. I'd like to say good evening to Brother Dion Flash, joining us from out of Canada, I believe it is. Uh, and a good evening to you. Glad that you've joined us on You in the Word. Uh, we are desires of your music. And I want to just put a pause here this evening, friends. This is a musician here. He plays the piano for many years. He was in Bermuda working here on the island and to your loving wife and to your family. But we miss your music. We play the music track that you left at the at the station every week there, there about. But we know that you have more music. Send it down to us here in Bermuda. We'd be more than willing to share that information with Bermuda and the world and we are live online inspire FM 105 but let's get back to the message this evening we're here looking here at you and the word that was just a commercial there we are brethren all across the world and if you're doing something great friends I just want to just commend you for the great work that you're doing as well we are here thanking God for you and the work that you're doing back to the word itself and so we see that man has his part to act in promoting the growth of the kingdom. 
just as much as in the days of Jesus, they were promoting the grain, trying to encourage the grain to grow. The Bible says that we must prepare and enrich the soil and cast in the seed upon all of the soil that has been prepared. We must till the field, and tilling the field takes a lot of work, friends, but we must go out and labor in the fields. But there is a point beyond which we can accomplish this work, friends. No strength or wisdom of man can bring forth from the seed the living plant. This is entirely God's work now. Let man put forth his effort. To the utmost limit, it is stated, as God must still depend upon a simple method, and that is called a method of his divine growth. God comes in, friends, and we must de depend upon God to do the great, great work himself. We've done all the labor. We've, we've done all the tilling. We've done all of the shearing of the gospel, but now it is God who does the increase. God causes the ground to grow, and we praise the Lord for the growth of the ground which he has given. A blessed good evening going out to Judy Spence, and a blessed evening going out to uh, Dolson, blessed evening going out to uh, Marissa, uh, Marissa, blessed evening going out to Claudette, and also to... Uh, Brother Philip, bless evening to you as well. I'd like to read some comments here this evening. Thank you very much. Brother Philip states that Jesus states here a key principle of his kingdom. Believers must continue to rely on God in order to learn and apply his truth to their lives. Or they risk losing the effect of what they have already known and have received. Friends, what a word this evening. And we do encourage your uh, your words to us this evening on you and the word. And so we see, according to the word this evening of Mark chapter 4, Jesus here is talking about verse 26 to, uh, to 29. Jesus is talking about the kingdom having a growth process, having a reaping process. And there is life in the seed. There's life in the word of God. There is power in the soil. But unless an infinite power is exercised day and night, the seed will yield no return. The showers of rain must be sent to give moisture to the thirsty field. The sun must impart heat. Electricity must be conveyed to the barrack seed. Did you not know that the earth gives off uh, electricity? That's why it's important, friends, every morning, Every morning, do your best to go outside with no shoes on. Well, I'm not actually go outside in a place where it's infested with things that can go up in your feet. But at the same time, it does wonders for you. If you live on, a, on an island, do something good for yourself and go on the beach with no shoes on. It's important. But if you live in a country, friends, whereby you're able to go outside on your own or in your own grass, then please do yourself a favor. Get hooked up with the earth again. Electricity goes up through the feet and goes up through the entire body. It helps to make you strong, bring you in one with the master. And so we see that the electricity goes into the seed itself, which was buried. The life which the creator has imparted, he alone can call forth. Every seed grows, every plant develops. By the power of God, friends, every soul will grow as we allow them to be hooked up with the life giver, Jesus Christ. And as the earth brings forth her buds, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to, bring, to spring forth from his children, according to Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 11. The word of God says, as in nature, so in the spiritual growth, the teacher of truth, Jesus Christ, is now talking to all teachers of truth today. Seek to, to prepare the soil of the heart. You must sow the seed, but the power that alone can produce life is from God. Friends, all the appeals that you can give if it's not through the power of God, then nothing happens. 
And even if it's through the power of God, friends, watch when God does something. The Bible says that our work is a work of vainness if it's in our own accord. But through the power of God, friends, we can do a great work. There is a point beyond which human effort is in vain. And while we are to preach, while we are to teach, while we are to educate, we cannot empower, empower that which quakens the soul and causes righteousness and praise to, to spring forth. Only God can do that through Jesus Christ. What do you say, Althea? And so Jesus teaches that in the preaching of the word, there must be the working of an agency beyond any human power. We're talking about the Holy Spirit here. Only through the divine spirit will the work be accomplished. Only by the Holy Spirit will the word be living and powerful to renew the soul unto eternal life. This is what Christ tried to impart and impress upon his disciples' mind. It's not all of what you have done or been with me the three and a half years that will give you success. Your success will be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we see here that there was a big question, a big question that lingered in their minds. And they said, well, how are we going to do this work? And Jesus pointed them to the great comforter. I want to pause here. There's another point which Brother Phillips bringing forth this evening. Question. Why should God continue to show us deeper things if we are not doing something with what he has already shown us? A good point, Brother Philip. I believe that the reason why God is revealing new things to us or deeper things to us, friends, is because he loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love. He is not like human beings, friends. You know, human beings, sometimes if we see our children doing things or maybe uh, we see one another doing things where we have said all sorts of things to them to at least encourage them, but they're going against us or going against the things that we have taught them. We as humans say, you know what? I'm leaving them alone. But God is not like that. God will come by, friends, and still give us a clear revelation. There's a point. And may I use this here as a reference? The Bible says that God told Moses to hit the to hit the rock whereby water could gush out. Well, Moses didn't just hit the rock, friends. He hit the rock twice. And Moses said, must I fetch water for you rebels? Notice now, Moses was now bringing unto himself the great work which belonged to God himself. Now, the rock which he hit represented Christ. And Christ was to die once for humanity, not twice. So by Moses hitting the rock twice, he was stating that Christ was going to die twice. No, friends, the Bible says Christ would die once for humanity. But through his death, through hitting him, through hitting the rock, through Christ dying once, the Bible says that salvation came to us all. The Bible says because Moses had failed this test, one test, this test had caused Moses now not to go physically into the promised land. The last book of the Bible in, in Deuteronomy, in the last book of the Bible, here we have it now that God is now calling Moses up to the mount. It's a very sad story. But let's look at it for ourselves in Deuteronomy chapter 34. <clears throat> a very sad story. Here it is. And the Bible says, After Moses had blessed Israel, he climbed silently and alone to the top of Mount Nebo, in the plain of Moab, just east of Jericho and Jordan, where he could look over, look out over the land of Canaan. And the Lord strengthened his eyes so he could see the whole country from the land of the Galilee, from the land of Galilee to the northmost part of Dan. Now, when the Bible says God strengthened his eyes at this point, now he's 120 years old. Already he does not lead, need glasses. But when it says that, that the Lord strengthened his eyes, friends, the Lord gave him telescopic vision. And with a telescopic vision at this point now in his life, he looked all over and saw it clear. God in his mercy would do something for Moses. But this was not only that God would do for him. Note this point here. He didn't just see over into Dan. He also saw into Naphtali, into 
Ephraim, he saw into Manasseh. He saw all the way over to the Mediterranean Sea, which you call the Black Sea. And the Word of God says, and he could see all Jordan and the Jordan Valley, Valley and beautiful plain of Jericho and even the Dead Sea. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promised by my oath to give to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have let you see it, but you may not go in. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab on top of Mount Nebo, as the Lord had told him he would. And then the Bible says, And the angels of the Lord buried him on top of the mountain in the land of Nebo. The Bible says that he died. Now, if that was something to just say, well, that was, that's the end of Moses, the Lord does not stop there. God in his mercy now, in the book of Jude, and I'm going to go over to the book of Jude. This is why God deals with us the way how he deals with us. And I thank you very much for that question. You know, sometimes he repeats himself. But notice this here. He does not leave us. And even though we go through trials, he does not lead, lead us. Do, does not leave us. Pardon me. Picking up now about Moses now here in the scriptures. And I'm looking here at, here we go, down in Jude. In Jude, uh, picking up here in verse, let's go down to verse verse, uh, verse 8. Well, verse 9, it states, In contrast to these godly men is the Lord Jesus, also called Michael the archangel, for he is over the entire angelic host. When he was challenged by Satan about his intention to resurrect Moses, he didn't come as at Satan with a with a with a with a blistering attack, nor did he condemn him with mockery. He simply did this. He simply said, "God rebuke you for claiming Moses' body." Now the Word of God says, friends, that God took Moses up. He didn't allow him just to stay down there. God is a good God. He raised Moses up and took him into heaven. Now, the Word of God says that there were three people who were actually transported from this earth who actually, two of them, actually had tasted death. Note with me, please. The Bible says that, sorry, one of them had tasted death, not two, pardon me, one had tasted death. The Word of God says that Enoch, who walked with God, was translated and did not see death. The Word of God says that Elijah, he was translated without seeing death. And the word of God says that Moses was translated into heaven, but he saw death. Now there's another group of people who actually were translated, the 24 elders. We'll talk more about them on another date. But the point which I want to raise here this evening, friends, is that why should God continue to show us deeper things if we are doing nothing with what he has already shown us? This is the question. Because God is so merciful. He's not like us. He wants to save us. He wants to redeem us. He wants us to come to a place, friends, whereby even at the last moment when he now makes himself known to us, in this last presentation of his divine love, it is at that point now we say, yes, Lord, I now see. Moses, although he had sinned, and he should have never, according to man's philosophy, should have never gone into heaven. If he was living living in some of these countries in the world today, friends, I guarantee that some of these leaders, and even us, we would have long shut him down. We would have long shut him down. Take it from me, friend. I've had an experience which I would, have, which I would never, ever forget in my entire life. I've had an experience like this here. Caused me to lose out on a particular point. But through it all, the Lord still elevates. Hope this helps you this evening as we have looked at Moses' as a type of why the Lord does what he, what he does in the context of still delivering things to us when we go contrary to his will. God is a good God. He's not like us. Let's get back to our lesson this evening. And we do welcome your comments this evening. Thank you for that comment this evening, Brother Philip. And we have allowed the word to speak for itself on this point. The work of the sower is the work of faith. The work of the sower is the work of faith. 
every sower that goes forth, every farmer that goes forth to sow a seed, friends, is a man or a woman who's working in the context of faith, the misgermination of the growth of the seed. He cannot understand, neither fathom, but he has confidence in the agencies by which God causes vegetation and vegetables and, and, and other things to flourish. In casting his seed into the ground, he has apparently thrown away the precious grain that might furnish the bread for the table. One lady was home one day and she was there. She said, honey, what are you going to do with that seed? She says, he said, sweetheart, this is all I have left. And I know that there's just a, a few loaves of bread that's left here. But I must go out and sow the seed. And the man by faith went out and sowed the seed. So Christ's servants are to labor, expecting a harvest from the seed they sow by faith. As we're talking about faith here this evening, I want to pause for a moment. Because beyond the faith of you and I, friends, is the faith that God calls forth by parents. And may I say to you this evening, every parent listening in, uh, uh, to this uh, segment of You and the Word, I'm not speaking down upon parents as much as speaking to us all to do our best in raising our children. For almost, almost every parent friend must understand this lesson of sowing seeds into our children, seeds of righteousness and seeds of encouragement, seeds of faith by, by, by the merciful hand of God. And so we see that Christ is talking about seed this evening. For the seed has in itself a germinating principle. Each time you speak to your child, you are, you, are, you are doing something for that child. This principle that God himself has implied, yet if not left unto itself, friends, if it's constantly tended and taken, a, or the attention is, is given to this precious seed and to the, to the very soil and to those that receive the seed, friends, they grow up to be wonderful children in our community. I encourage you to do all you can with your children. Plant in their lives uh, uh, lessons of love and lessons of kindness and lessons that can lift them above the things of this earth and cause them to reflect upon heaven. The seed is the word of God, which God has called us to sow into the lives of our children. And we must plant these seeds in their lives for a time, for a time will come, friends, when we will not have the privilege of planting seed into their lives. And so we must do it in the tender years of their lives. It's called the prenatal years. From one to seven, I encourage you to strengthen your children, to educate your children, to encourage your children. For after the prenatal years have been com completed, all you're doing now, you're just watering the plants, either plants of righteousness or plants of wickedness. Did you not know that, friends? Now, in order for a child who, who of which has been planted the wrong way or giving, giving encouragement in the wrong way, that plant there has to be cut and grafted. We can praise God for the grafting process. But God said of ourselves, we cannot bring forth good fruit. We must be uh, uh, connected with God. But it all begins with the germinating process. Let's get back to our study this evening on you and the word as we're here talking about this here context of faith. The good seed may for a time lie on notice in a cold earth. There are times, friends, when, when you have said something to your family, and this is on the same point there which you raise. There are times, friends, when you say something to your family, to your children, or to someone, and it seems like nothing's happening. But God says to us, friends, it's currently in a cold, selfish, worldly-hearted uh, state giving no evidence to what has transpired. No root is taking place in that particular seed. But afterwards, as the Holy Spirit of God breathes on the soil, it happens suddenly. We don't know. 
I've planted some seed, friends. It just laid dormant there for a couple of weeks. And before I knew it, I'm saying, this stuff is coming up. And it's growing. Other seeds I've seen within three to four days just pop up like popcorn. But everything works according to God's time. There are other seeds I've not seen. I've planted and never seen it. The seed has died. But all due respect, friends, we have some seed, friends, which sometimes is buried into the cold earth. And not of itself, friends, that the seed is wrong, but where it's planted to, it's cold. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6, we are to do our work and leave the results to God. For in the morning sow thy seed, says the book of Ecclesiastes, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. Continue to plant the seed, friends. Don't stop because you are not seeing any evidence. And this is with the question that you raised earlier, Brother Philip. Don't stop because you see no evidence of the plant taking any, 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 any root or of the seed taking any root. Keep on planting. Keep on sowing. God's great covenant de declares that while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Exodus, sorry, uh, Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. And so we have to have to plant in confidence, confidence of the promise that God had given to the husbandman, till the soil. Not less confidence, but till the soil in full confidence, friends. The word of God reminds us, friends, according to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I have placed. And it shall prosper in the things wherein I have sent it. God's word shall prosper. Why should I hold back the word of God, friends? God said we ought to preach the word the instant in season and out of season. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, Psalms 126, verse 6. And so we see here, God says, don't ease up, don't stop, because, quote unquote, that child or, or that woman or that man, it seems like they're not listening. It seems like nothing is happening. Everything I'm saying to them is like they're doing everything backwards. I'm telling them that liquor causes 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 great problems with the body. And the more I talk to them, to, to them about liquor, which is actually alcohol, friends, the more they're drinking alcohol. Until finally they go into the hospital and their liver now is being challenged. And the doctor says to them, sir, you have two choices. Keep on drinking and lose your liver and die. Or you can stop drinking today and you have a small chance. Now, sometimes all it takes is just one of those type of conversations. And before you know it, friends, that person now has straightened up. Sometimes for a couple of weeks, they straighten up and then they go back to their old ways. But we should not give up on them. God doesn't give up on us. The germination of the seed represents, represents the work of God, the beginning of spiritual life. And the development of the plant is a beautiful figure of the Christian growth. It's all to do with Jesus working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And as in nature, so in grace. As in nature, so in grace. There can be no life without growth. No life without growth, friends. The plant must either grow or die as it groweth in silence plants grow in silence believe it or not friend there's no music out there there's no television out there plants grow in silence and I'm not knocking either one of those things this evening but the point is plants grow in silence this impeaceable impeaceable environment they continue on growing 
And as they continue on growing and developing, friends, they take on a life of its own. The same thing happens to one who is now growing in Christ Jesus, friends. Give them opportunity and space. Did you not know the more space a plant has according to the growth of that particular plant, the better it grows? Sometimes we cover people over. We want to be over them, and, and we, want to, we, we, we want to do everything for them. Let them go ahead. Go Leave them alone. Let them go and, and, and let them develop their own strength. Give them some room to develop their strength in the Lord. Don't crowd over them. Too many people, they want to be leaders, but they want to, they want to uh, 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 govern over people at their command. God did not give you that privilege, friends. God himself doesn't do that to us. How much more we to one another? If you just join us this evening, we thank you for joining us for You in the Word. This is an open Bible study, and we invite you to share your thoughts with us. If you have any questions, any thoughts, please share them with us on You in the Word. Our study this evening is entitled, The Mysteries of the Kingdom Unfold, Part 4. You see the blade first, then after the ear. Let's get back to our study this evening. As we were saying that, that at every stage of the development of life may be perfect. Yet if God's purpose for us is fulfilled, there will be continual advancement. Sanctification is the work of a lifetime, the Bible says. And as we consider the work of a lifetime, friends, God is working with us. We are challenging people. But God in his mercy still works with us. As our opportunities multiply, our experiences will be enlarged and our knowledge will be increased in the Lord and we shall become strong to bear responsibilities, strong to hold the fruit of the tree itself. This is what God wants us to be, friends. He wants us to be strong Christians. And as, as, we, as, we, as we become strong, to bear our responsibilities and to mature into, into, into God's wonderful vassals, friends. Remember, it is a privilege to be a child of God. It's an honor to be a child of God. For the plant grows by receiving that which God has provided to sustain its life. It stands, it, sorry, it sends down, it sends down, it sends down its root into the earth. It drinks in the sunshine and the dew and the rain. It drinks it in. It receives the life-giving uh, uh, properties from the air. So the Christian is to grow by cooperating, by cooperating with the divine agent. Feeling our helplessness, friends, we are to improve all opportunities granted to us to gain a fuller experience. Again, may I just say to you that every opportunity God has given unto you, we ought to improve it. We want to thank God. This thought here that Brother Philip shares with us this evening, showering showers of integrity. A very important point there that God, he showers his children with, but showers us with the spirit of integrity. This is not of ourselves, but it's of God who gives us that spirit of integrity. And as the, as the plant takes in, uh, takes in the nutrients from the soil through the roots, we are to do the same thing in God's word, friends. Take in the nutrients of the word through the Holy Spirit. That is the root whereby we are connected through the Holy Spirit. Now we are now growing in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Notice, friends, it is God now who gives us this power. It is God now who enables us to do his will. 
It is God now who causes us to speak words of comfort and hope. It is God now who causes our mind to be constantly stayed on him. It is Christ, friends. We are now connected with God. And if Christ abides in you, then are you my disciples, says Jesus, friends. And if we keep our minds stayed upon Christ, the word of God says, he will come unto us as the rain. And as the latter and as the former rain arises upon us with healing in his wings, friends, he would come. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. And so we see that we shall grow as the lilies of the field. We shall receive as the corn and grow as the vine. Hosea chapter chapter 14 and verse 5 to 7. We see this evening, friends, that God has a clear word for us, his children. And he wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What do you say out there? We can thank God this evening that God has given us this opportunity whereby we are like him. God's word is true. And by constantly relying upon Christ, the word of God says, as our personal savior, something about that personal experience, friends, I cannot have it for you. You cannot have it for me, friends. The Bible says we must taste and see for ourselves that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him for ourselves, friends. And as we grow in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, we are growing more like him. I'd like to say good evening to uh, uh, Place. Thank you for joining us this evening on You and the Word. Feel free to participate. Any one of you sharing your comments, your questions. If you have a question on anything that I've shared already this evening, please share it. And if by God's grace we have the answer, we will be more than willing to share it. Or somebody else may have the answer this evening who is tuning in to you and the word. Let's grow together in the grace of Jesus Christ. That's what happens to our open Bible uh, uh, classes, which we have every, every Monday evening, every Wednesday evening, and every Friday evening for this open Bible class to the world. Back to the, the wheat develops, as we have stated earlier. First, the blade, then the air. After that, the full corn in the air. The object of the husbandman is in, is in the sowing of the seed. We have stated that, that the culture of growing plants is the production of grain, which was in the days of Jesus. That was their main concern, that they may have grain to feed the people. The culture of, of, of the word of God today, friends, and of the seed, which is the word of God, friends, is to now grow uh, souls. God wants to save humanity. And the desire, the desire of Jesus, friends, is that we may have what is called bread. Bread to feed the hungry. And the seed for future harvests, friends, comes forth as something of which God himself testifies of his goodness, of his grace, and of its hope. So the divine husband looks for a, looks for a, for a harvest. And he's looking for that harvest this evening in you and me, in those of our friends and our neighbors, in those of whom we have come in contact with today along the highways and the byways of life, friends. God is looking for a harvest. And that harvest can only be accomplished if we are shearing the precious seed. We must be willing to shear the precious seed for the object of Christian life, friends, is this, is fruit bearing. The object of a Christian life is fruit bearing. And God says he wants us to bring forth fruit for the reproduction of Christ's character in the believer. That it may be, be uh, 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 reproducted as a, re, as, a, as a product of Jesus Christ. Christ working through us to save someone else. Blessed evening to you, Brenda. Thank you very much for joining us. We have a comment here by Brother Philip. Yes, Living, he says, talk about living a Christian life, friends. He says, is not just a matter of outward action or, uh, or perception. It involves your inner character, who, who or when no one 
what God is looking. And, he, and, and this point here, friends, is very important. The character building. The character building, friends, only God sees that like he sees the seed that's in the ground. And only God is moving upon the seed through the energy that is within the earth. The same way that God is now moving in our lives individually. We cannot see it. We can only experience it. But once it happens to us, friends, others see the outward form of what takes place in the inside. It's not, it's not an outward show no, no more, but it's a living experience. We can praise God, friends, for this living experience. So the Word of God says that the plant does not germinate, grows, or bring forth fruit for itself. But to give seed to the sower and bread to the to the to the eater or to the hungry. You can find it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, and verse 10. The word of God says that it is not for yourself. Too many people, friends, are beefing up one another and, and lifting up one another and saying, you know, pastor such and such, you know, friends, we are nothing without the word. I'm just your brother. I'm just your brother, friends. And may I, you know, I may have a title and all that type of, but I'm your brother. Jesus has a title also, but the Bible says he is our elder brother. What a word, friends. God is our elder brother. Jesus himself came down on earth, friends, made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant. Humble yourself. And there can be no growth or fruitfulness in the life that is, that is centered in self. And I'm saying to all of us this evening, friends, who are centering their lives on themselves and looking unto themselves and saying, nobody comes around to see me or no one does something for me, friends, find something to do. According to my mother used to say years ago, friends, get yourself a life. Go out and help somebody else. Blessed evening to you, love. Thank you for joining in with us as well. Let's remember our daughter overseas as she's overseas in Boston. Let's remember her in our prayers. Thank you for joining in with us on you and the word. So we see this evening, friends, that God wants us to have a clear, have a loving have a clean experience with him, friends. But this experience causes us to be able to help somebody else. Able to work with someone else. God says a self-centered life, friends, is a life that is doomed to die. And if you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you are to forget your... The songwriter was, was right. Let us forget about ourselves and consecrate concentrate on him and worship him worship him christ the lord friends we are to forget about ourselves and try to help others friends talk of the love of christ to someone tell of his goodness do every duty that presents itself with a good spirit carry the burden of souls upon your heart and take them to jesus in prayer morning and evening by every means in your power, seek to save somebody. Help somebody. Don't wait for people to come to you, but go to help them. You'd be surprised how many people are in need of some help this evening. They're not asking for your money. They're asking just for your help. So it happened that some of us may have a little money to help them with. But friends, they're not asking for your money. God has a cattle on a thousand hills. But what God does need, friends, he's, he's in desperate need of willing workers. For well, the harvest is ripe and the labors are few. Jesus said that he has sowed the seed. And how long we have sown this seed here? This is now uh, the ending of June. The ending of June. And we've been coming on with you at the beginning of January. Can you imagine that? We have been committed to coming to you every week since january how many preachers do you know preach three sermons in one week when we first started here we were every other day for three straight weeks and then we went to uh to where we are now mondays wednesdays and fridays how many preachers do you know that prepare that many messages per week friends 
But I'm here to say, friends, I don't prepare anything. God downloads it in my mind, and he does it for us because he wants to save us. He wants to redeem us. He's the one who has the seed. And he says, hey, look, Kevin, I'm giving you some more seed. Go and sow the seed and share the seed with those of whom you come in contact with. But share the seed in love because I love them with an everlasting love. I love them. So talk of this love of Jesus. Share the love of Jesus. A blessed good evening to you, Brother Boone. And I'm encouraging you to look out for my family up there in Boston. They're up in Boston right now. Get back in contact with me. We'll talk more with you. Let's get back to the work this evening. As you receive the spirit of Christ, the spirit of unselfish love and labor for others, you will grow and bring forth fruit, the Bible says, and the grace of the spirit will ripen in the character. It would ripen in your character as well and your faith will increase. Your convictions deepen. Your love be made perfect. More and more, you will reflect the likeness of Christ in all that is pure, all that is noble, all that is lovely, friends. The Bible says you will reflect the character of Christ. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. This fruit can never perish, but will produce after its kind a harvest unto eternal life. Friends, what sort of harvest are you looking for this evening? God says he wants to give you a good harvest. A good harvest this evening. God wants you to grow in grace, friends. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately, the Bible says, he put it in the sickle. Beginning, beginning uh, uh, of this here harvesting, friends, has taken place already. God is harvesting his children unto himself. But the Bible says that judgment must first begin at the house of God, and it first begins at us. What shall the end be of them who obey not the truth? First Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. God is now gleaning in his harvest, bringing his harvest unto himself. Soon he shall come and he shall reap the harvest. He's going to gather the harvest that he has now put in bundles. Have you ever been to a farm, friends, lately? I encourage you to do so. If a farmer's out there gathering in wheat, as he's gathering in the wheat, He's doing something marvelous. As he's gathering in the wheat, friends, he's putting them in bundles. After everything has been picked in, I can't understand it yet, but to this day, friends, I just do it because that's the right thing to do. I've been taught to do it this way. But after everything has been gathered in, then he now goes out and he brings in the bundles. Right now, friends, Jesus now, he's tying up, tying up the wheat, those persons who are wheat at the same time friends he's not paying much attention to to those to those tears matter of fact tune in on today's monday tune in on wednesday evening when we, when we should talk about the tears on wednesday evening we shall talk about these tears and our subject for wednesday evening friends is a subject which you don't want to want to miss is a subject you don't wish to miss friends is a subject that is entitled who planted these weeds? Who planted these weeds? You want to tune in on Wednesday evening. The subject shall be, who planted these weeds? Get back to the point here. And so we see that the harvest is ripe. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it forth, the sickle. Because the harvest is come. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. And when the manifestation of Christ is seen in his church, friends, when the character of Christ is reproduced in his church, this character shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, friends. Then and only then will he come to claim them as his own. You, he's waiting for me. But for some unfore unforeseen reason, friends, the character of Christ is not seen in us yet. 
And because the full character of Christ is not seen in us, God cannot come yet. He will not come yet. You know why? Because he's waiting for the reproduction of his character to be in you and in me. This evening, friend, there's something that's slipping, slipping up in our lives. Only you know and only I know. Those desires that you have, maybe for someone else, friends, God says those things ought to be put away from us. I don't know, friends, what it is that's holding up Christ, Christ's uh, uh, perfection or his character in you. But whatever it is, friends, this evening he's saying to us, we can cast our cares upon him. It is the privilege, the privilege of every Christian, of everybody who is seeking salvation, not only to look for, but to hasten the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12 helps us to see this in Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. We're coming to a close this, this evening. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. Peter says a lot, you know, friends. But picking up here in verse 12 in Second Peter, note what he says here in Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. Are we all there? Note what he says here, friends. As we look forward to the day of the Lord, let's do everything we can to speed its coming. And when that day comes, the heavens themselves will, will be on fire. And the surface of the earth will melt because of the intense heat. But in harmony with God's promise, we look for and beyond all this to be a new heaven and a new earth. The home of the righteous friends. We're looking for something better. We're all, we, we are all who profess his name to bear precious fruit to the glory of God. How quickly, friends, if we, if we all do our part, how quickly the whole world will be sown with the seed of the gospel. But tonight, friends, there are some of us, friends, who are sowing the seed of discord. We are, the, we are sowing the seed of lies. We are sowing the seed of tail bearing. We are sowing the seeds of murder. But God says to us, friend, whatever seed you are sowing this evening, friends, some of us are sowing the seed of adultery. Some of us are sowing the seed of covetousness. Some of us are sowing the seed that is causing great, great, great detro, 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 detro uh, 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 concerns to humanity. What happened to the will of God this evening, friends? God says to us, in me, you can overcome. You can overcome, friends. And if we do our part in showing and sharing the gospel seed, friends, how quickly this last, this last message, how quickly the entire world will be won. Quickly, how quickly the great harvest would be reaped and Christ would come to gather the precious grain. So go this evening, friends. Sow the seed. Sow the seed of eternal life with someone today. You can show the and you can sow the seed by by everyone listening in this evening, friends. If you just did one thing, just share this here, this here message with someone this evening. Believe you me, friends, the Bible says that in your crown there shall be many jewels, because you took the time to sow the gospel seed. You may not be able to preach it or teach it like me, friends, but whatever you can do, friends, do it quickly. Even just by sharing this with one person this evening and encourage them to share with someone else, you'd be surprised how quickly the gospel will be shared with humanity and how quickly the great harvest will be ripened, how quickly Christ would come. Friends, I'm longing for Jesus to come. Are you satisfied with this world, friends? I'm not satisfied with all of his curses of this world here. Everything going upside down, the devil here running rampage upon the lives of humanity, friends. I'm not satisfied with this. 
Oh, friends, you think that sickness is good? I have a daughter, friends, whose heart is only operating at 20, sorry, 30, 35%. That's one part of her life. But at the same time, she's smiling every day, despite it all, all of her challenges. And you know what, friends? I have a loving wife, too. I praise God for her. Despite of how little we may have in life, she still loves me, and I still love her. Praise God for that woman. She's such a godly woman. A godly woman in God, friends. And I love her. But friends, this is the love that God wants us to share with one another. Don't be ashamed of your family. Don't be ashamed of your brothers and sisters. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This evening, I challenge you this evening to share this gospel. To share this message with one person this evening. I challenge you in the, by the grace of God. Loving Father, we thank you for your word to us this evening. We thank you for the challenge of your word. And now, Lord, we ask that you would keep us from slipping and stumbling. You would cause us to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed us with the heritage of Jacob. Bless thy children, we pray, and thank you for this word. And thank you for this open Bible class. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been listening to You in the Word. Our subject this evening has been The Mysteries of the Kingdom Unfold Part 4. You see the blade first, then the ear. Join us on Wednesday evening when we shall look at part five of this here of this message. And our subject shall be Who planted these weeds? Who planted these weeds? May you be blessed this evening in the Lord, all of you, and know that we love you. On behalf of my family, God bless all of you. Thank you for listening in to you and the word. I'm Chaplain Kevin Santucci. Have a blessed night with a wonderful God, all of you.